Welcome back to the post game of Let's Play 3D Dot Game Heroes. After you beat the game, you are given the option to save. This lets you run around in the post game world. Technically, post game takes place just at the uh, exact same time as your save, just before defeating the boss. So you can still run over to the tower and fight the final boss again if you want to. But now that we've completed the game, when we've got that little check mark next to our save data, there's one last thing that opens up. The final block defense. Over here at the hotel, just near the Dark Bishop's Tower. Just inside, speak to the guard, who will let you play. Now to start out, we're going to be doing something a little bit different than usual. Also, I'm speeding the video up, because this is a long level. But for wave one, stand there. Don't do anything. Stand and wait until you hit level three. Then just kill all of them with your sword. As always, the game is about spending as little as possible. And that's what we're aiming to do. Now that the first wave is done, we can actually go build a couple towers. Now building these towers, though, is going to last us a very long time. These two towers, I believe, will last us until wave four or so. And then after that, we've got an even longer wave, but those two towers should at least handle that wave. And they would have to, because that was an airborne wave. You couldn't help with your sword if you wanted to. But this level, this block defense map, so to say, is the longest that we have done yet. It is 40 waves total, which is why I'm speeding it up. The raw recording for this was over an hour long. Granted, the Block Defense Plus levels do do a little bit more and can be longer, they... That's kind of another story entirely. Now with the first Dark Knight down, you get a crystal, use it on a bonus up, because we need money. That is our chief goal. Later on, we may need something else, and we will need something else, but at least at the moment, we need money. And then comes the wave of clay golems. The clay golem, the clay golem, the clay golems. Like, gl how about glaive golems? Like golems that just run around with giant glaives? The clay golems are, um, as usual, a very long level. If you don't have to help with your sword, if your turrets can handle it, as mine are here, that's a prime opportunity to get a lot of experience points. You can see we laid down a third turret a couple waves ago, and that turret is lasting us another long while. In fact, it's going to be lasting us until wave... 10? I think wave 4 we put down that turret. On wave 6, or not wave 6, on wave 7, you are going to have to help with your sword. Your turrets aren't going to be able to handle it. In fact, throughout this entire thing, you're going to be using your sword a lot. But you should be alright. At, uh, at wave 7, you will need to use your sword, as I said, and even wave 8 and on, you are probably going to be needing your sword still. But don't drop any new towers yet. We're still waiting as long as we can to get that delicious, delicious money. Now, as long as this course is, this is another prime opportunity to get some experience. Don't kill the Dark Knight as fast as possible. Let him walk around a little bit. Get him low on health so you're confident he'll die. 
kill him at the very end and use his crystal to get another bonus up. Bringing our bonus to 15%. So however much money we have at the end of a round, we will get 15% of that added to our running goal. Now that we're at wave 10, we do need to build some more things because these are flying dudes. We couldn't help with our sword if we wanted to. So we are at wave 10. We're actually not really building any more towers. We're leveling them up, bringing all of the towers up to level four. Well, not all of them. Two of them are level four. One of them is level two at the moment. And once again, we're still not dropping any more towers. May need to help with your sword. But we're saving up that money. The wave 13 is another air, which means we will want a little bit more firepower after killing the Dark Knight. Let's just let him wander around a little bit. Get that experience. We're level 7 already, by the way. We're actually churning up those levels pretty good. Buying another bonus up. In fact, the first four crystals you get are to be used on bonus ups. And then for wave 13, level up your final tower to level 4. So you now have three level 4 towers. Taking down the airborne... Whatever those are. I think it's interesting, you only see these enemies in one place in the entire game. And that is uh, in the graveyard. Though I suppose that's better than the succubus, who you see in one room, though granted she was essentially a mini-boss. Wave 14, we are still not doing anything new. You shouldn't need to use your sword, though, so just let your towers handle the job and collect the money. And then wave 15, build another tower. I'm trying to cram them in as tightly as possible here to get as much real estate as possible, since the tower does go down exactly where you are standing. So if you're standing just a little bit too far over, that's one less tower that you can make. But that was the fourth tower dropped. Pixel precise. You can actually hold R1 to walk and move a little bit slower, which will give you even more accuracy in trying to lay down those towers. You do have to put them down with some haste, though. You need them down to handle the next wave. So wave 16, another clay golem wave. So we're just waiting around yet again. And then finally, we end with a dark knight. Eh, he doesn't have much life left. I'm sure we can handle him when he works his way around, so let's get just a little bit of experience towards level 10. Level 10, of course, is still the level cap, so once you hit 10, you don't have to worry about nothing anymore. Buying another bonus up. And prepping for wave 17. And by prepping, I mean doing nothing. In fact, we're not doing anything until, like, a long time at this point. Wave 21? or so. You'll have to assist with your sword from time to time, but you're still doing pretty good. Now our power right now is 103. 103 power is actually how much damage we do directly to an enemy when we stab them. These things with 300 HP, 400 HP, that's a third to a quarter of their HP off every time we stab them. With our towers, that's a pretty hefty goal. I mean, that's a pretty hefty amount of poop that we gotta put out. Wave 19, you should not need to assist with your sword. Just let your towers do the job and collect some money. Now, you do see wave 20 coming up as the Crystal Slimes, which is gonna be a fun time for everybody. You are going to want to assist with your sword on that one, if only because they run so darn fast. In fact, I can't even say for sure that we're stabbing them, really. We're just kind of holding out our sword and hoping they run into it. But then that follows up with a Dark Knight. Now, this Dark Knight is not a pushover like the other ones. Chase his sorry butt down and finish him off. You d Once again, you do still have to worry about the odd collision. 
with various obstacles where you're hitting something when you shouldn't be hitting something. But use his crystal to buy a slow tower, which we'll be wanting to put down soon. And then comes wave 21. We're going to be needing a lot more firepower for this one. So drop not two th or three, but four new towers and level them all up to four. They should do the job. And this should once again last us a decent amount of time. We've got eight towers now, wave 22 coming. Now wave 22 is kind of a terrible wave, to be perfectly honest. You see, these guys are a harsh, harsh step up in power over the previous waves. Our eight turrets are not going to handle it anymore. So go to the bottom and poo turrets. Just don't worry about precision, don't worry about anything. Your goal is to get down as many turrets as possible, as quickly as possible, to hopefully take them all out. You saw I think I built another eight turrets. Thankfully, at this point, we should have an insane amount of money. We should, we should be past the threshold, whereas we can build a good couple turrets every turn and still be making money. Now, Wave 23, dealing with the rabbits as fast as they are, we'll want to pull up down a couple slow towers. Though, not necessarily for the rabbits, but mostly because we just have a lot of money at this point. So from here on out, you can just drop down a couple slow towers and a couple, uh, arrow towers every wave. Don't spend too much money, though. We still want to save up our money. We have a lot of use for a lot of money later on. So, we can handle wave 24, so we're just gonna handle wave 24. And try to build up a little bit of money here. Next wave, we should have enough money to lay down a couple more towers, but still, be very careful. Now for beating him, grab one more bonus up, because we do still need a lot more money. But that'll bring us to wave 25. We've still got 15 waves to go, and we're making money, but the enemies are also increasing in health and power very quickly. Well, not necessarily in power, really just in health. So we are still going to be wanting to lay down a lot of towers every turn. You can see I'm not even laying any towers down this turn, or if I did, it was a lot earlier. The bees, of course, are all flying. You can lay down a couple anti-air towers, if you'd like. That'll help out with a couple waves here and there. We still have some 13, 14 waves to go, so we've got a fight ahead of us. Do keep an eye on your money. Don't spend too much. You want to constantly be making money. Twenty-seven, another wave that we should be all right with exactly what we have. Our goal at this point is indeed to just collect money. We could drop some more towers down, but our goal is by about wave 32 to have an unorthodox amount of money. To have an unrealistic amount of money. Not because we need that much money, though we will, but because we will be spending money very quickly, and we need the, our bonus up to counter that. Twenty-seven, another slow wave. Wait for the golems to pass by and collect their money. Filled out just a little bit of space down in the corner, since I did have plenty of money. I've got almost 3,000 gold here. Over 3,000 now after the bonus, and 30% of that will get me 1,000 gold a turn. But we want a little bit more than that, so... 
we're still saving. We're still saving, we're still building. We're trying our darndest to fill this entire screen up. And, uh, yeah, by the end of this, it's gonna be overkill. It really is. And you can see, the with the precision of trying to get in there and put down as many turrets as possible, I've crammed in a lot of turrets. Now, though we do need money, there's something that we need more than money. So do not spend that crystal. We're going to save it up. Wave 32, I do believe, is the next Black Knight, Dark Knight. So we're going to use those two crystals combined to get something quite fantastic. Wave 29, there's not too much that we're doing at this point, so you can still build a little tower now and then, but do try to save your money. And that knocks us up to almost 4,000. I was starting to think I wasn't able to put a tower there. I laid them all very... I did lay them all very precisely. The only place that I had to just poo them out in a terribly unprecise way was along the bottom of the screen. And that was just to handle that one wave. So I am losing a couple towers down there along the bottom that I could potentially use otherwise. Having spent very little that wave, I gained a lot of money from the bonus up on that one, so we're now near 5,000 gold. At a 30% bonus, if you can hit about 7,000, that'll knock you up to the money cap. Not really anything will even live, this, live through our gauntlet at this point. But anymore, we're not really even building up for the individual waves. You see, at the end of this, the final wave is always a lot harder than any wave that came before it. It's the last boss for all practical purposes. So even if you can last until the end, if you can last until the final wave, if you're just barely holding on, you probably can't take the final wave. The Dark Knight goes down on wave 32. We've got almost 7,000 gold, and we use our two to buy a missile tower. Now, the missile towers are like arrow towers, only dumb strong. Like, kind of dumb how strong it is. I mean, really. You can see on the arrow towers I walked through, what was the max power on those? 50? The, pa the max power on a missile is... What was that? 6,000? 8,000? The only cause, of course, is that missile towers do cost a lot of money. You can't build them willy-nilly. You can actually spend money on these faster than you can make them. But we've hit 65,000 money here. Upgraded one more turret. I'm just above 6,000. I... yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and build some more missile turrets. I was actually debating there. I was wondering if I should only spend down to 6,000. Because that should get me near enough to the cap. At 30% bonus, I should be able to get up to the money cap of 9,999 as long as I don't have... or as long as I have between six and seven thousand. But I built the one. And I may just build one more this round. And wait out again. With this many missile turrets, especially all right that close to the entrance, enemies can barely even enter this place. 
There's so many turrets that I've built that haven't even been used yet. You can see every turret that's pointing straight down hasn't fired yet. These missile turrets are doing their job, too, so that's pretty good. Oh, also hitting triangle will hide the wave info. Oops, I got hit. We got another crystal, buy up another bonus up. Because now we have more money and can build more turrets. Build more missiles, build more missiles. May build just two this round. And that should take me up to the money cap next round. There we are. Nah, building one more apparently. Go me. But you can't hit triangle to hide the information on the oncoming waves and towers that you're building when you walk through them. Which, with this many towers around, is almost necessary to be even, to even be able to see where you're going. Are all these missile turrets necessary? Perhaps. Perhaps not. Wave 38, we are nearing the end, and we do essentially have unlimited money. At this point, we're just plopping down two to three uh, missile towers per missile turrets, missile towers per round. And that should be plenty enough to handle. I mean, even now, we've got like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve missile towers. And things don't even get the chance to enter. These golems, of all things, with a massive 2,000 HP. By this point, we have to rely on our turrets. Our own power is negligibly powerful. 130 power was kind of something to brag about 10, 20 waves ago, but against enemies with 2,500 HP, 100 isn't even worth attacking them. Just sit back and watch the explosions. Now, I'll go ahead and uh, slow this down for wave 10. 10. Wave 40. The final wave. The final wave consists entirely of Dark Knights. Or Black Knights, whatever they are. They do come very slowly, but they don't last very long. And I'm gonna real quick grab this crystal, because I kind of need it, and then I'll sneak around and spend it real quick. And I'm gonna buy a Quake Tower, because why not? Grab the other crystal, and then I'm gonna build a Quake Tower up here in the corner. Just build it here to hit these dudes right at the beginning. I've actually been intentionally leaving this upper left corner empty all this time. Now he dies, I've got two crystals to spend, I'm gonna buy a fire tower and a bonus up. Remember, do not buy a life up. If you buy a life up, even if you have never taken damage, it will not give you a perfect win. Building a fire turret, leveling it up all the way. And do I have room to build something here? Yes, I do. I'm gonna build a cannon. Because why not have every tower on the field? I'll leave a little path there for him. You can still get to him. I think you can build a turret in front of him if you actually want to, though. That is just hilarious. Every time they walk in, 
they just immediately stop and go, Oh no, what did I walk into? Ah, building a slow tower there. Because I think they're moving too quickly as soon as they enter the screen. I'll buy another bonus up because money. I'm laughing, people. I'm genuinely laughing. He just walks in and... Oh, what did I walk into? And I'm gonna get another bonus up. Heaven help me, if there was another wave after this one, I would most certainly have unlimited money. 70% bonus! Destroy the night! And win the day! Remember, everyone, there is no such thing as overkill. You get a small block, you get a life piece for beating this one, a small block for getting a perfect win, and for perfect winning everything up until now... You get the Worm Sword. The final sword that we have been missing. Up yours. Now our prizes for this were great. We got a small block, which we could use to buy more things if we really wanted to. We got a life shard, which I'm not entirely sure why they gave us a life shard. There were the perfect number of shards in the game to get full life. Though that's probably there for uh, New Game Plus, where you carry over many of your items. And we got the Worm Sword. Now, it's not the strongest sword, it's not very long at all, and it doesn't have much length. So overall, it's... Not the most fantastic sword in the world, certainly nothing compared to our Moon Sword. It does have piercing by default, though it can not simply not have spin or beam. It does, however, have a very special attribute to it. You see, in the Japanese version, this sword was called the Dragon Slayer, or something similar, at least. A very rare enemy on the overworld, I think you may have seen him once in this Let's Play, is the Blue Dragons. The Blue Dragons, much like the Crystal Slimes, will drop a fair amount of money when killed, and there is a chance that they will drop a small block. They're kind of a pain to kill, and they can mess up your day. However, the Worm Sword here will kill them in one swing. Hence, the Dragon Slayer name. Sadly, I did go try this out on the Dragon Boss. It does not kill him in one blow. In fact, it does the expected damage for a sword of its power. But that is it. That is the last of what we can accomplish in 3D Dot Game Heroes. Thank you all for being here with me all up until now. I've decided against doing Block Defense Plus. The Block Defense Plus levels are difficult, to say the least, and I simply don't have it in me right at this moment to tackle them all. Even one is a feat to defeat, much less ten. So, the Let's Play comes to a close. However, I have one last prize for everyone. You see, I've been trying to figure out along with the help of the forum and all of you, what all of the loading screens reference. And, I'm honored to say, for the first time in all of the internet, we have completed the list. We know what every loading screen is referencing. You can find the list 
over on GameFAQs, I do believe, as well as piecing together bits and pieces from the forum. But next time, I'll be putting up that video and showing off not only all the loading screens, but what they reference. It's my final gift to all of you. Until next time, everyone.